What's up today, boys? Today in Cheesy's Garage, we're going to check out this combination S2000 portable power unit and a portable solar panel. The S2000 portable power station has a 1500 watt battery, lithium ion, of course. Charging, you can put 500 watts of solar or 400 watts of AC. This has a continuous 2000 watt with a surge of 4000 watt. The 10 amp carport which is 13 volts with USB-C and four USB-A's. This is the All Powers portable solar panel with multiple connections and adapters so you can use this on other units not only your All Powers. Comes with the standard solar panel hookup. Has a peak power of 200 watts with a 36.6 volt maximum power voltage. 19 to 22 percent conversion rate. Let's check out the S2000 portable power supply first. In the box we have the all powers documentation. Claim your warranty. Five year limited warranty and all powers have been around for a while so you don't have to worry about them going out of business. You can join them on Facebook. Comes with a nice soft storage case with a zipper top. Yeah, let's put that in there with it and see if that stays. Not bad. Nice soft storage case. That's the two units together. Very nice. A nice storage case for all the peripherals, which is a 12 volt cigarette socket charger and 120 volt charger this has a built-in power supply hey gizmo you see any bunny rabbits so it's approximately 15 inches wide nine and three quarters deep just under 10 inches tall so this unit has four ac outputs at 120 volts 60 hertz or you can change it for your country of origin to 50 hertz has one DC outlet, two USB-C's with PD100 fast charging capability, and four USB-A's. Has an X60 type connection for the solar. On the right side of the unit, you can see a little muffin fan here to keep the components cool inside. On the back, you have your AC charging outlet, standard socket, and on the right side, Looks like another muffin fan. Let's see how much batteries in it. Looks like 76%. That's the AC output. You can hear the fans kick on. So to turn on the DC, use short press. That'll turn all your DC outlets on. And if you want to get to Bluetooth to connect to the app that is provided with this, long press the DC. You'll see the Bluetooth icon come on. Download the app from All Powers and we'll connect it up. I already have the All Powers app. I read the agreement and we connect through my Google account. Continue. So we're going to hit Add Bluetooth Device. We're going to select the S2000. And there it is. So from here, you can turn on and off your AC outlets and your DC outlets. And you can change from 50 to 60 hertz. In the settings, you can modify the device name. So it shows your input power charging, your output power, your battery remaining. Turn your AC on and off and your DC on and off. So let's fully charge this on AC. So the internal power supply outputs 394 watts, almost 400 watts. Let's let it charge and we'll do some tests. Of course, do not use this unit while it's stored in a bag. Don't charge it and don't use any power outputs. This is for storage only. It will overheat because it needs these fans to keep the unit cool. Charging up at 389 watts. 68% now, we'll let it fully charge and do some tests. 
As you can see in the All Powers app, its input charging is 397 watts. All the outputs are turned off. A few moments later. And we're at 100%. And yes, you can charge this while you're using the outputs. Nice clean sine wave. 116, almost 117 volts RMS. Almost a perfect 60 hertz. So let's run these two fans, see how the battery holds up. Four AC outlets. Let's turn on the AC. Kicking both of them on at once. We're gonna draw 428 watts. Time is one o'clock. So let's let it run for a while. Try to output on the USBs. Let's see if this does a super fast charge. Yes, super fast charge. That was a USB-C. Let's try the USB-A. It says slow charging. So that's just regular slow charging, I guess. But that USB-C Super fast. Been running 11 minutes and we're still at 100%. Let's open the All Powers app. This is saying 2 hours and 41 minutes. It'll run these two fans at 422 watts. We'll shut off our DC section from here. We'll let this run for a while. A few moments later. It's been exactly 1 hour and 11 minutes. Still have 80% battery left. Pretty good. A few moments later. Close to two hours now running these two fans. And we're at 51%. So I say the battery's holding pretty good and doing what it claims. Let's try to charge it back up on solar. So let's check out this 200 watt solar panel. Wow. Wow, that's a large solar panel, 200 watts. The XT60 connector is five feet stretched out has nice waterproof connectors so it looks like we have a total of about eight feet of course you can buy extensions if you need it that is a very common plug for solar the solar panel does come with loops so you can mount it or hang it instead of using the legs in the back it has four support legs that you can adjust to a certain degree this does have a built-in MPPT for solar, so it adjusts automatically, internally. Sun shining pretty good. Point it at the sun. Let's see what we get for charging. The size of these units for the output have definitely been getting smaller. Let's see what we get here. Hundred and twenty. I suppose that's not too terrible. You can see by the direction where my finger is, when it's the least amount of shadow from my finger, so this thing's got to be laid down a little more. Pull these legs out of here more. That's at its max. Still at 120. Say the time it'll take to charge it. It is 2.57, so we'll say 3 o'clock. We'll leave this out here for an hour or so and see what it goes up to. Move the unit in the shade. The next day... So let's try this again. The clouds rolled in and I got a rainstorm right after I set up. Right now we're doing 80 watts. It is kind of a little bit overcast. The sun's behind them little thin clouds there. Now here comes the sun, a little better. Oh, look at that, we hit 140. If we can get those clouds cleared out, it would definitely handle an off-the-grid situation if you're not putting a lot of load on it, like an air conditioner or something like that definitely maintain it and keep it charged if you want it to charge faster this has a high capacity charge you can get 500 watts worth of solar panels and the time is 1044 let's see what it does in an hour it was at 51 percent charging yesterday when i unplugged it but then it went back to 50. now it's back up to 51. 601 hours is like 25 days that seems kind of crazy doesn't it one hour later all right, it's been an hour. Let's see how much it charged. 
Wow, 61%. Well, that's pretty good. That's 10% in an hour, so I don't think that's right. There's no way that that's right. If that went 10% in an hour, it'd be four more hours to complete it. That must be minutes, not hours. Even that would be about 12 hours, so this is charging way faster than it's claiming on that gauge, which is a good thing. I'm going to leave it out here a few more hours. As long as the sun participates, and technically I should be lean back further that's as far as it'll allow it so they really should have put adjustable velcro to let this panel lay flatter in my opinion because we're not getting a full effect of the sun straight on a few moments later so it's been about another hour and a half and the sun has shifted for quite a while but that's pretty good for a couple hours of solar faster than I expected. I think it's a pretty good combo. Decent performer. If you're in the market for one I'll put the links down below. Let me know what you think. Vin Cheesel approved. That's right. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products to use are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.